Welcome everybody to a look at a new Arrow video release and it is 1969's That Cold Day in the Park. So this is directed by Robert Altman, who I've enjoyed several films from, but there's only really been one that I've absolutely loved. But yeah, the other films that I've seen from him that I've enjoyed have been McCabe and Miss Miller, Thieves Like Us, O.C. and Stiggs. But the one I've actually properly loved has been Le Long Goodbye. So this is a psychological thriller clocking in at 107 minutes in one form there is another form that is available in this release and uh, yeah this stars sandy dennis who was in the likes of parents god told me to and 976 evil so it's about francis austin who is a young wealthy spinster who invites a mute teenager into her apartment after finding him freezing in the park next to where she lives despite her best efforts their lack of communication only increases her sense of loneliness as her possessiveness spirals into frightening new realms. So this is on the whole an engrossing effort that has, an e uh, that has excellent cinematography. There's this one particular shot where it uh, starts at the bottom and then it cranes all the way up this, I think, three-story house um, while looking inside each window and then it cranes all the way down and, not, and it's just one long shot while people are actually inside doing things. And it's a really, really beautiful shot and it's really, really well nicely done. So it's got a good cast, but I think this on the whole would have been better had there been a bit more ambig ambiguity, ambiguity sorry, uh, to certain aspects of the plot. As when the film does take place outside of the apartment, it becomes less interesting. As, minor spoilers here, the teenager isn't actually mute. He's technically sofa surfing, uh, so he's really only taking advantage of this apartment that he's living in with this woman because it's an easier life. He's fed, he's got his own bedroom, um, but yeah, he's not really mute and um, there's no real reason given for why he's uh, doing that, um, to be honest. Apparently he did it when he was a child with his sister, but yeah, I would have preferred not to have that element outside of the apartment. I would have preferred the ambiguity uh, to have been stayed in the apartment, not knowing why he's uh, staying mute, not having any real reasons for why he's staying there, just kind of like messing with this lady in terms of mind games. I think that would have been a bit more interesting. But still, what is here is still somewhat interesting in its own right, but I can definitely see this going a bit further in a better way. But that said, it is also well paced, has some decent tension in its final act, and the score is well done. So, yeah, overall, a, a solid release. Not the kind of thing that you'd normally see from our video. This does seem like more like one of their, um, what are their other labels? Um, that they usually release Arrow Academy. Yeah, it seems more like an Arrow Academy kind of film, to be honest. But that part of the uh, Arrow brand has obviously been long defunct so yeah it's just under the normal arrow video uh, label got a really really nice slip cover with it slightly shiny on the uh, title and directed by robert altman which is nicely done and yeah we actually get two different versions of the film here we get the 107 minute cut which i've already talked about and then we also get a 114 minute pre-release cut so that basically means that it's had a um it's a newly extended 114 minute version of the film pre-integrating previously deleted material from a surviving pre-release -pre print. Didn't watch it myself purely because I figured there's no way that seven minutes in a film of this kind of type is going to be, make much of a difference. Maybe it does. Maybe it does add to uh, the film in some regards. But I doubt it would have solved the uh, major problem that I have with this, which is the lack of um, ambiguity. So, uh, yeah, but still. Nice to have both discs instead of just, you know, one version, well, both versions on the same disc as it was. So, yeah, that's nicely done. Uh, we also get reversible artwork, the original artwork for the film. You can see, it's pretty nice. I actually like the more, the simplicity of that one, to be honest. This one kind of sells it as something that it, you might expect something different especially from like the, the early 90s in terms of psychological fillers from that point we also get a, a nice booklet as well again with the new artwork on the front and kind of a, a shot from the film on the rear inside we get your casting your crew we also get from kansas city to hollywood the early work of robert altman brad brad stevens from 2024 and that's 10 pages long we get the eyes of francis austin by anna bakatusk bakaskaya uh, Probably getting her name wrong, I do apologise. That's also from 2024, that is six pages long. Then we get the original press notes from 1969, that is nine pages long. 
Then we get an excerpt from Altman and Altman by David Thompson from 2006. That's three uh, pages long. And then we get the seven minutes by James Flower from 2024, which is five minutes long. And then we uh, five pages long even. And then we get a uh, about the transfer. So it was presented in high definition with its original mono aureal soundtrack. The master was supplied to our films by Paramount Pictures on behalf of George Little Enterprises. The film was preserved from the 35mm camera negative by UCLA Film and Television Archive in cooperation with Paramount, with funding provided by the Hollywood Fres Foreign Press Association and the Film Foundation. The high definition master was produced at Paramount. Additional footage not included in the final cut of the film was preserved from the 35mm acetate, acetate, acetate composite print by the Film Foundation at UCLA Film and Television Archive. These excerpts were scanned at uh, Photocom uh, with additional grading and restoration completed at our free store studios in London. So yeah, they definitely put some effort into that extra seven minutes that is in this. Um, I would be interested at some point in watching the longer version, but just didn't have time to watch two versions of the same film, two basically the same versions of the same film that are nearly two hours each. So. Uh, yeah, but if you have seen the extended version or the pre-release cut version, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it because I'm sure it has some aspects to it that are worth, you know, acknowledging and watching. They wouldn't have put that version in this release if it didn't have something going for it at the very least. And then on the disc itself, we've got the optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, uh, new audio commentary by critic Sam Dayum, isolated music and effects track and lossless mono, Crazy in the Rain, Altman's Vancouver, and newly produced Futurette Revisiting the Locations by Kier La, La Janis, uh, author of House of Psychotic Women. Then we got author, uh, an archive interview with film critic and historian David Thompson, author of Altman and Altman, extended scenes from the pre release print of the film on the um, 107 minute version disc. Um, so if you're not interested in going through the whole film again and um, seeing um, those extended bits in the context of the film, then you can just watch them outside of the context, uh, which has never been seen on home video before. Then you've got over 10 minutes of behind the scenes footage featuring Altman and Dennis from the archives of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, theatrical trailer and image gallery. So there's definitely a whole heap of extras on the disc on this, as well as obviously these second version of the film so yeah um put a lot of work into this i think our video i've done uh, for a film that i don't imagine is going to sell particularly well because yeah the title isn't exactly giving away a lot the new artwork doesn't particularly give away a lot either to be honest and uh yeah it's certainly not in the wheelhouse of the you know horror films from the 70s 80s or 90s so uh yeah, but it's still well worth watching. I've only given it three and a half out of five purely because I think the amb the lack of ambiguity is a, a little bit concerning. Uh, I don't like it when films overly explain things. I would prefer myself to have some form of interpretation on what is actually going on, whereas this seems to hold your hand a little bit too much as far as I'm concerned. But still, if you've seen the original cut or the pre-release cut, I'd like to hear your thoughts on what this film is like in your eyes. But nonetheless, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.